Welcome to Empowered by Iron, a podcast for female strength athletes by female strength athletes. We are your hosts, Kristen Lander from Fiercely Fueled Nutrition Coaching and Mary Morton, PhD candidate. Hey guys, welcome to Empowered by Iron. This week we're going to talk about something boring. <laughs> <laughs> we're so boring. <laughs> we're going to talk about the boringness of life and training, the monotony. Yeah, um... Anyone who's trained for any length of time knows that training can get super monotonous. Super monotonous. Um, And it's, that's something we really want to talk about, how to deal with that. Because um, there's a few different strategies for dealing with it. But ultimately, like training is a grind, right? Mm -hmm. Like you just, some days you just don't feel it. You just go in and do it because... You got to do it because you have goals. Down. Yeah, you have goals. So, um, and you have to be okay with that grind and know that the grind isn't for everyone. Like, it might not be, it might not be for you. You just, it might be, no matter what, it might be really boring. But hopefully we're going to give you guys some strategies that might help you if you're really struggling with it. Or at least know that you're not the only one who struggles with it because right. we've all been there. Right. So... Um, I think the biggest thing is, um, that training is super structured, right? Yes. If it's a good program, yeah, it's very structured. Like even some coaches, they'll say, you know, you need to do day one before you do day two. Don't do day two before you do day one because it's so rigid. Right. Yeah. And you might be doing the same, basically the same thing for like four weeks, you know, the same, yep. <laughs> the same stupid complex that you freaking hate, you might do for four <clears throat> weeks. <laughs> Coach of Kristen. Not that that happened to me or anything today. Um, but anyway, so one of the things that I think really, and we talk about this a lot, but one of the things I think is really important is know yourself and know how to assess yourself. Right. If you're noticing that you're really bored with your training or struggling to get to the gym because you just are like oh fuck right so take a step back and assess yourself like ask yourself why am I doing this yeah do I do I enjoy it is it just difficult right now maybe you have goals you want to hit a certain total at a meet or you want to qualify for a certain meet or you want to do your first meet Mm -hmm. or whatever those goals are you know You have a plan to reach them, hopefully, and now you're kind of stuck in the grind. So do you need to reassess your goals and say, maybe I don't care about that meat as much as I thought I did, or maybe I need to take a step back and look at something else and maybe not do that meat and maybe I'll do different meat. Or So I can definitely speak to the, the goals part. I mean, if you set goals, yes, you should, I believe that you should go balls to the wall and try to achieve them. However, you know, why are you setting those goals? So um, about a year ago when I switched over to weightlifting from powerlifting, I had these goals. I wanted to hit a certain total. I wanted to go to powerlifting nationals. I wanted to do all these things. And when I thought about it and took a step back, those weren't really my goals. Those were just goals that people who I followed on Instagram or who I idolized, those were their goals. And their goals were to do that. And they were super passionate about it. And I thought if I had their goals, I would be passionate about it too. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't. And I was frustrated. I wasn't hitting numbers I felt like I should. I was frustrated that my work ethic was low because I just didn't give a shit. I mean, I tried to give a shit, but it's really hard to give a shit when you don't give a shit. (laughs) Yeah, it's sense. hard. Well, it's hard to go in the gym and work really hard when you don't care. Right, exactly. You can't put yourself through it. Like it's just impossible. You just not. You're not. You're gonna start skipping sets or reps and not do your accessory work or whatever. Yeah. Which is, I think, part of what happened to you, right? Yeah, I just stopped. I like. I wanted to do this. It was like this last qualifying total meet. It was right before nationals in 2016. A year ago, mm-hmm. yeah, 2016, and it was this last chance qualifier. And my training, I hardly did anything to train for that meet like in my previous meet I put up some decent numbers and had I trained like I was supposed to train and squat like I was supposed to squat do all the numbers do everything I would have qualified but I slacked off I just I didn't want to be there I didn't want to do if it felt heavy I stopped if 
if my bench wasn't right, I just, I quit because it didn't feel right, or maybe I was quote unquote hurt, even though I was totally fine, and my nutrition was shit, like I was eating a package of Oreos a week, like I was so dissatisfied with a lot of things. Yeah. And so the meat was crappy. It was complete shit. And it's funny because you you would have qualified for nationals. Like oh, totally. you would if I would have actually trained, I would have totally made it. Right. Right. Because you weren't that far away. No, I and wasn't. I, and I was like, "Yes, you're going to do this. It's going to be awesome." And I had no idea you weren't like excited and about I was like, it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then afterwards you were like, "So, I didn't really like kind of shot myself in the foot. I didn't really do all of my programming." And I was like, "You what? What do you mean? Like, who does that?" And then as we started talking about it, I realized hates what they're doing. Yeah. Yes. It started to become clear that maybe you want to do something different. Yeah. So you started to make that transition and you became a completely different athlete when you did that. Yeah. And now, I mean, there's no excuse. I do all my accessory. I don't compare myself to, I mean, my coach can snatch like almost twice what I can snatch. Yeah. Like, I don't compare myself to anyone else. It's only me and I love it. Yeah. That's awesome. I had something similar. I did, you guys may or may not know, I competed in CrossFit for several years and, um, I just, I, I don't, I did, I mean, I loved it when I was doing it, but I got, and I was, got to the point where I was like, I never want to do another fucking thruster or burpee or run if I don't want to, like, it just got to the point where I was like, that I'm not enjoying this anymore. No. Like, I'm hating yeah. this and I'm, and I, so I took a step back and I was like, what are the things, because I, there were parts of CrossFit I really liked. So like, what are the things I really liked? What are the things I enjoyed? And one of them was the community. But the other part that I really enjoyed was the weightlifting, the days that we did Olympic weightlifting. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? The whole reason I got into CrossFit in the beginning was because I wanted to learn the Olympic lifts and I couldn't find a gym to learn them. Right. So I was like, well, I'm going to, I guess, I go, I'll, I guess I'll just go to CrossFit and I'll it's learn like the them. the same thing. <laughs> I couldn't find anywhere to learn them. And I'm the person who like, I need someone to show me how to do something. I can't just, like Mary taught herself weightlifting by watching YouTube videos for a while and I'm so impressed. <laughs> I can't do that. It's my generation. Um, we learn everything from YouTube. Yeah. Flat tire, YouTube. Oil, YouTube. Yeah, but like a very complex movement. Oh. <laughs> you did pretty good. Um, so anyway, I was like, you know, I'm just going to sign up for this meet. And I gave myself like a month or six weeks to train or whatever. after CrossFit, right? Well, no, I was still doing CrossFit. So I had like a CrossFit competition. And then like the, like the next week I had like a weightlifting meet. My first weightlifting meet. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. And so... Um, and then that CrossFit competition was the last time I ever did CrossFit. I never did CrossFit again after that. That was like literally the last day I ever did CrossFit um, because I start. Well, it was fine. I had fun at the competition. But as soon as I started training weightlifting, I was like, oh, yeah, this is it. This is it. This is it. Yeah. So I was doing some weightlifting a couple days a week and some CrossFit a couple days a week up until then I had both of the, I had those competitions back to back and that I fell in love with it. That first weightlifting meet that Mm -hmm. I did, even though I had no idea what was going on. It was amazing. And you guys have all heard that story a hundred times. And if you haven't, then you're not listening to all our podcasts. So (laughs) what are you doing? That happened to me in high school too. I was, um, I was a freshman and I played, I did volleyball, basketball and track and I didn't really like, I mean, I loved volleyball, don't get me wrong, but I wasn't that great, (laughs) so I got cut. But basketball, I was really good at, but I never fit in with the people. I didn't really like all the drills. I mean, I went to the practices. I had a coach I used to really love, but now I was a new coach, and so I quit. Like, I just didn't try out, and I went and did soccer instead, which I was horrible at, but I had all my friends there, and I had a great time. Like, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. But I, I was so miserable in basketball. My parents were so upset. They are like, oh, you're going to quit basketball? But you loved it. And I was like, I loved the idea of it. Okay. I loved the idea of having friends and having a community. And then I found that with soccer. Yeah. So you replaced it. You were, you yeah. had... You had the right idea. It was just the details were wrong. Right. And I was a shitty soccer player. Don't get me wrong. I was crappy. <laughs> but I was kind of like the... 
you know how racehorses, sometimes you get them like a little goat and, well, not you, but like racehorses, they have a companion animal and sometimes yeah. it's a goat. I was the goat. I was like the everyone's companion animal. I made practice fun and uh, I sat most of the games. <laughs> But I loved it. But you loved it. Yeah. So I think one of the things that you have to assess if you are, if you're not having fun and if you are, if you're training to compete, one of the things you need to ask yourself is, am I actually a competitor? Like you might actually not like competing. And that that's why we recommend like do a meet is like as soon as you can perform your lifts properly do a meet because if your whole goal is to compete and then you, this happens to people, it's happened to good friends of mine. They train for something for a really long time and then go in and do a competition and realize that was not, I didn't enjoy competing at all. And so if you don't want to compete, that's okay. You do not have to, you do not, you can have other goals. I will Um, say though, like I'm not a competitive person really. I don't I don't I don't get all excited when I beat someone. But I do love competing against myself. Yeah, I'm the same way. Yeah. yeah. If I if I sit there and try to compare myself to other people, I'll give up because there's always gonna be someone I'll better than me. Yeah, I'll be, I'll get frustrated and give up. But I'm super competitive with myself. And, um, that was the thing that when I decided to leave CrossFit and switch to weightlifting was I knew that about myself, that I loved competing Mm -hmm. and that I have to compete because if I don't compete, I will slack off so bad because I don't have a purpose. Right, right. Yeah. And we've, I think we, didn't we do a podcast about that? Probably. Yeah, but I mean, that's like a consistent thing. Like, if yeah. you don't have something to train for, you just goof off. Yeah. You I, personally. Me personally, yeah, yeah. yeah. I will become lazy, and I hate being lazy, and it's just what I end up defaulting to if I don't have a goal. I ha- I'm i a very goal-oriented person, so I yes. have to have goals. I have to compete against myself. I compete against no one but myself. And, um, you know, I took a step back and realized that and was like, well, what can I compete in that I might love? Bingo, weightlifting. I love it. Bingo. (laughs) Um, But, you know, I think that if you are trying to rely on um, motivation to get you through the grind, it's never going to work. It's never going to work. It's not going to work in your training. It's not going to work in your diet. It's not going to work in your life. You're going to be motivated for probably the first, if you're lucky, first couple of weeks. And right. then after that, your motivation dissipates and now you're left with what? Mm-hmm. Really nothing. Nothing. Just as, as we'll, we will talk about later, it's the habits. Yeah. You're, you're we... just left with your habits. Are you habitually lazy and don't do what you need to do? Or do you come in regardless of if you've had a good day, a bad day, you want to train, you don't want to train, do you come in and do what you need to do? Yep. I think that um, it, it comes down to discipline and um, habits are reliable. Motivation is fleeting. So the question isn't how to stay motivated. It's how to train yourself to work without motivation. Who are you without that motivation? Are you disciplined? Can mm-hmm. you follow through with your goals? Um, I think having a coach really helps with that because yes. they help you stay focused. Um, but I also think that, you know, um, of what I forgot what I was going to say, um, (laughs) that, that, yeah, you've got to develop these habits in this discipline and you have to train through it. You have to train through the times when you don't feel like doing it, but it's also totally okay to say, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. And I'm kind of sick of it. Mm -hmm. And I don't like the monotony is too much. Like sometimes it's too much. So take a break. It's okay. It'll still be there. You might take a break and just like train just for fun and do that for a little while and then go, yeah, okay. I need, I need, I need something. I need a goal to train for. But maybe you don't. Maybe you're the type of person that just likes to go to the gym a few days a week just to keep uh, your fitness level up and stay healthy. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. 
But, I, you know, I think that, that you just have to know yourself and you have to really figure out yeah. who am I and what do I want. And if you're not, if you know that you need to compete, you know that you're a competitor, that you like to have goals, you're goal oriented and you're not having fun, then maybe you need to try a different sport. Right. Try something new. Yeah, yeah. Keep in mind, though, training isn't always fun. Some days suck, but... Like today ma- sucked really bad. You prefer- <laughs> to you sucked. Right. I mean, I still kind of... I think I had fun because I was laughing at you. <laughs> but the over... The majority of times that you come in, you should... Now, don't get me wrong. I still sometimes dread to come in. But once I'm there, it all just becomes a habit. You put yeah. the weights on the bar. You do what's written down. You finish. And you feel so much better afterwards. I have a overwhelming majority of fun at training than I do bad. Like I'm, I have more yeah. fun than I do have not fun. Yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. And I think one of the things is like uh, you and I have trained ourselves to really enjoy the grind. We enjoy it. Yes. Not um, in nutrition, but I enjoy it in training. Oh, I, I'm, well, I don't really enjoy the grind in nutrition either, which that brings me to another point that I really want to make is that, um, if you, one of the things that can happen is that our training and our nutrition become, can become all consuming if we yes. let it. And so my. You're checking your my fitness pal or my macros every five minutes to look at. Right. Thinking about what am I going to eat next? What can I eat next? Because I make this fit in my macros. Can I make that fit in my macros? Or you're constantly like looking at your training for the next day and thinking about it and then watching all your training videos from today. Like it can be completely consuming if you let it. And so I think one of the best ways to deal with the monotony and the grind is to not let that happen, you know, go into the gym, give it your all, do everything you're supposed to do, write everything down that you're supposed to write down for your coach, send whatever you have to send to your coach and then be done. Forget about it. Forget about it for the rest of the day. And um, same thing with nutrition. If you are counting macros or you have some sort of nutrition plan um, and it's starting to feel like a grind and getting really monotonous and you're sick of it, you're spending too much time thinking about it, I think. Yes. At least in my experience. No, that's, I mean, that's part of the reason I usually fail with nutrition or I don't do what I need to do is because it becomes all consuming. Yeah. Like I don't even, I've been counting my macros for, I don't even know how long, um, years now. And I count them every day. Now, that's not to say that if if I'm in like a period of like just maintaining my weight, um, that I don't like, I'm going to eat something that I know doesn't even fit in my macros. I do that. Yeah. I definitely do that. There's a time and there's a place for it. Sometimes you just need that mental break. Um, I try not to do that if I'm actually trying to cut weight, you know, <laughs> you can't, right. you have to be serious. Right. But, it all goes back to your goals. It all goes back. Like yeah. Right now, your goal is not to lose weight or gain weight. It's just to be. Right. But if your goal was to lose weight, you'd have to be more stringent. And it just right. comes back to your goals. Right. But even though I'm, you know, in a maintenance cycle of counting my macros, it, I'm not, I'm really not, um, I just don't. You don't think about it. I don't think about it. I eat the food, I log the food, or I log the food and then eat it, whatever. And then that's it. Like, I just, I don't think about it. I don't think about my next meal until it comes up. And it's, I mean, I just, I don't even, honestly don't even think about it. Like, I will be literally weighing my food and logging it, and I'm not present in that moment. I'm doing something else in my head. Mm -hmm. Because it's just second nature to me. I've done it for so long, I don't think about it. So there are times when I think we have to push through so we can get to our goals. Mm -hmm. And you have to push through that grind to get to the part where it doesn't feel so grindy, even though it is. And it's a mental shift. It's totally a mental shift. So like, if you're listening to this and be like, God, that's not me. I obsess over every meal. It's okay. It takes time. But when you, I feel like when you start catching yourself doing that, Drop your phone. Forget it. Get it out yeah. of your head. Start focusing on something else. It's not that important, especially when it comes to food. Yeah. If you find yourself at 12 thinking, fantasizing about what you're going to have for dinner, stop. Maybe it's time you need to go get a snack. But, like, yeah. stop thinking about 
what you've eaten, what you haven't eaten, and then you start analyzing, well, did I eat enough? Have I not had enough? Did Was yesterday that extra grape I ate? Was that too many? You know, whatever. You start thinking way too much. And yep. don't, don't feel stupid if this, you've done this. I do this all the time. I think we all struggle and with this. then you catch yourself and you stop. You catch yourself and you stop. And before you know it, it becomes a habit to not. Right. Right. So, ultimately... Training if- will be monotonous. Right. But enjoy the process. Yeah. It, I mean, honestly, life can be monotonous, right? Oh, totally monotonous. Work. Get up, take a shower, eat breakfast, go to work, stay at work, come home, play with your dog, go to the gym, come back, eat dinner, day after day after day. Yeah. Like, you see all these people on social media living these really exciting lives, and that's great. And I'm sure that they've worked themselves up to that, but you don't see their monotony. Right. You don't see the day in, day out of just, like, waking up and doing shit, waking up and doing shit. Yeah. So I think that really becomes your mind, your mindset. What are you going to do to break up this monotony? And I really, really, really believe that that starts in our mind. It doesn't start with, you don't necessarily have to change what you do in life. No. You just have to change how you think about what you do in life. Yes. And I can't tell you how to do that. No. <laughs> you have to figure that out for yourself. Right. I wish I had the answers. I think the easy, the, the best way to think about it is don't think of something as it's dragging you down. Or it's a burden. Think of it as something that's helping you. You wake up, you go to work. Okay, you kind of hate your job, but right now it is giving you money so you can pay your rent and you can go to that online class or whatever that is going to help you get where you need to go. Like, right. think of how it's helping you rather than hindering you. And I think that's a good first step for your mental, I don't know, well-being. Absolutely. Well, you know, so I spent 10 years in college. I, I worked full-time for eight of those years. Yeah, eight of Gosh. those years. Woo! Yeah. So, okay, maybe six. Anyway, whatever. I can't do math right now. Um, <laughs> the point is... It was super monotonous. And if I had thought about how, okay, I'm going to go to class from this to this time and then go to work and then study and whatever, because it was the same. It was the same for 10 years. Mm -hmm. If I had thought about that, I would have never finished. It would have been way too depressing. It's overwhelming. It is. But then if you go, okay, well, this is going to lead me to this step. And then that step's going to lead me to this step. And you break it down into chunks and you think about how those things are benefiting your life. And everything changes. So if you think about how training is benefiting your life, it's making you a better athlete. It's making you stronger. It's making you fight disease. It's, you know, all of these things that training does for you, Mm -hmm. it's providing you with a community. It's providing you with, um, so many, I don't know, a million things. The list could go on and on and on. And it really is about how it's making you better. And I think that if you can focus on that, you're going to be gold. It's funny you say that because I am, so in high school and college, I was very, I was just like that. I was like, just get up, do what you need to do, finish. And I look back now, I'm like, how did I do that? Where did that come from? And you just saying that made me realize that since I started grad school, God, it's been, it's that overwhelming sensation. It's like, oh my God, I have to do this and this and this and this and this. And oh my God, it's going to take up all my time and I can't do this and this. And it just becomes this overwhelming thing. And it's something I really struggled with in the last year. Mm -hmm. And now that I'm kind of, you know, the lights at the end of the tunnel, it's a little easier to be like, okay, just calm down. What can you do right now to get you to tomorrow? Right. Right. Yeah. I think about that even with my training when I have complexes that are not going well um or like for instance today Mm -hmm. I had a clean complex that was not going well and I sent a video to my coach and I was like what the hell am I doing wrong like why is it why why can't I lift very much weight today he wrote you a novel he wrote me a he wrote me a really long list of all the things I was doing wrong and I was like oh oh okay just those things great okay but and it was really overwhelming at first to think about and then I was like well okay number one I appreciate he's really trying to make me better it really bummed me out for a second I'm like he's he he loves me as his athlete he's trying to make me better he wants to see me get better so let what one of those things can I focus on to improve right now I can't focus on the whole list but let's think about one thing that we can do better and same thing when you have training that you aren't enjoying know that your coach is trying to make you better they're trying right and that if you just 
get through it. Like just do it and you'll come. It's going to think about who it's going to make you become. I think that's a great way to end that. Think of (laughs) how everything you're doing is going to help you become something, become whatever you're going to become. Right. And if when you envision that person that's going to make you, if you don't like that vision at the end. Fucking change it. Then that's your answer. Um, I don't want to do this. Reroute. Yep. So anyway, if you guys have any uh, questions or suggestions or stories about how you get through the grind, we would really love to hear it. You can always email us at empoweredbyiron at gmail.com. You can find us on Instagram at empoweredbyiron. What else? Where else they find us? That's it. I think that's it. I think that's it. All right, you guys. Have an awesome week. We'll talk to you next week. Bye.